toolkit. Now, right. Now, what do I mean? Tell me about this toolkit. Um, well, I figured that, that should be part of it, too. I don't know if you want to get a... I mean, that's the toolkit <clears throat> that we can you order specifically from a nest a lot. It's not included in anything. And it is its own part number. Right. Um, that toolkit will cover both the ISP 250 and the ISP 500. Right. Um, it gives you essentially tools that are specifically designed for the maintenance of the pump. Um, attempting to do it without these tools is possible but extremely difficult and very easy to mess up. I mean, these are specifically made for it so that your job becomes much easier. And Tim will be using these tools today on the maintenance. And these tools, with the tools, um, comes a manual that goes over every step of the maintenance process, step okay. by step. With the tool set? Yes, that is included with the tool set first. Right on. I don't think it was in here. Obviously, because I know we're in camera, so trying to get all these thoughts in here. Um, when Tim opens this up, the pump is going to be already cleaned. Uh, normally, we do a cleaning process. There's quite a number of different ways you can do the inside cleaning. Um, but this one will be cleaned um, previously, just for the sake of uh, well time. This is what the module is going to look like um, after it comes off the motor. We, I mean, pretty much the only difference right now between this and the full-blown pump is a couple screws around the end, and the motor will come right off. Okay, first, uh, to date. first step is to take off the fan cover. It goes fast as you want to. Take off the front fan. Now this has two fans in it, right? Correct. That's correct. There'll be one on the back side. Oh. Messed up. Correct. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that is held in there with a, uh, a key, which is why there's a little bit of a a little bit. Okay, right. Important key on 250. 
there's this little piece that comes off, it has to go back on. Okay. okay. Is it reversible either which way? It don't matter which way. Okay. All right, next step. Let's get out a second can. Don't forget those screws. Or first you can take off the six screws that hold, hold the stools together. Right. Oh, and this is an ISP 250. We're going this on just for the record. Okay. I didn't know it was 250, but I may want to mention that. Alright. Okay. Yeah, both fans off. The next step would be to open the, the module up. Two flat heads, one on each side. Right on. Breaks it loose. It's FS1. What is it? This is FS2. Okay. Next step is to take the working school out. Should pull straight up. No, we're, we're filming. Hmm? It's on. We're filming right now. Next step, take the crankshaft out. Yeah, we got a bunch of the crankshaft. Oh, using the 250, man. Mm -hmm. No, this is better. And it has its own orientation as well. Correct. Okay. Pull straight up now. And there's no key on this. There is no key. Right. You can see where the two slots are where the keys sit. Yeah. Okay. We're going to start with FS1 first. This is good. Steps to take the ball bearing housing off. Now, how is our ball bearing um, different or the same as others? Do you know? Uh, which to my know? knowledge, it's a pretty uh, standard ball bearing. Just, I just okay. stand. There's not a whole lot of. Uh, I mean, our, our our bearings themselves are not. You know, it's some sort of advanced technology. No, right it's pretty yeah. standard. Are the bearings are the bearings manufactured in uh, Japan? Correct. Yes, they are. Everything you see here is manufactured. Yeah, I believe one of my German competitors for a different for a turbo pump has a bearing or had a bearing issue at one point um, with their bearing. So they never had problems with Japanese ones. Know, but they had bearings that were German bearings at one point that were a major problem with turbo pumps. We have not had issues with our bearings. Okay. Um, any sort of issues with the pumps in other areas? Okay. Right, take three screws out, and two flat heads should. Pull the bearing housing up. Another 
critical point on the ISP 250, the washer okay. between the Does it matter which way it faces? No. Does not matter. Orientation doesn't matter. It comes in major kit. Okay. I'm going to move closer. All right, now the next step is to take the two seals out, the G seal and the shaft seal. All that needs two pieces of wood. So that is 8 minutes, 38 seconds. Eight minutes. Where would you say we are in the... Um... Right now we're almost halfway through FS1. Okay. And I, I, I know you want to do it fast too, and I appreciate that. Oh, that's fine. No, no, no. Actually, I, this I better too fast, too slow. My work will be yeah. to make sure I sync <laughs> the times with, more the, with the photographs. Not a critical point. No, but easier to take one one seal out at a time. Okay. Okay. It's just. Can I get a picture of that? Can you put the hammer right? more questions as well, Sean, ask as we go, just no reason to hold back. Alright, so that's a FS1. Now this is where I would change my pin cranks if they needed to be changed. Those are two seals? Yeah, the shaft seal right here and G seal. And the pin cranks are not, <clears throat> excuse me, are not normally changed on a major maintenance. Okay, where are the pin cranks? The, right the two pin cranks are, okay. But if you're going to change the pin cranks or you're going to re grease the pin cranks, mm -hmm. you take out the four screws and the pin crank pulls straight up and out. Okay. Uh, you may need to use a heat gun to loosen. Up the aluminum around the pin crank before it come out easier. This is good. This is good. Man. Now, how is the um, shaft seal and the uh, G seal different? Uh, well, they're both. They're both metal. They're both double lip seals. They're both metal. Okay. They're. It's just one goes into the high pressure chamber. One stays on the exterior. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is the step process where you, after all the parts are out, you mm -hmm. clean. At your discretion, whichever method works best for you. <coughs> so, reassembly of FS1. So you're going to put the darker of the two shaft seal one in first. So it's taken apart? Yeah, FS1 is completely. This is some okay. The other scrolls are not. Right on. Right Usually on. I do it one scroll at a time. Sure. Uh, sure. Just it's easier to disassemble one, clean it, reassemble it, move on to the next one. Right on. Right on. All right. Um, what do you use for your cleaning? Cleaning, I use just a dry rag, uh, a Dremel tool with wire brush attachment. Okay. Um, very seldom do I 
soak the parts. Okay. Yeah. So. What do you soak it in? I do not soak. No. You don't. Mo moisture is not recommended at all. all. So I use a obviously an air gun. Right. On. But essentially, in, in, in less than ten minutes, it's taken. You've taken apart FS1. Yep. Yeah. Now, I mean, Tim has done this sure. quite a few times, so he doesn't really have to sit here and read the book along with it. So, right. Anybody who's doing it the first time really shouldn't expect to fly through it this way. Right. You can get better at it, right. certainly, and that's that's kind of the key, especially if you have a you know a customer that has quite a few pumps. All right, parts, fixture one, 15, fixture two, fixture five. And to put the shaft seal back in. And this is where orientation matters. Okay. okay. Now make sure your seals facing the correct direction. Make sure I have the grip. Basically, you want the closed face facing in towards the high pressure chamber. Okay. It sits right on there. This part requires Loctite Yeah, like that. And now, on the other side of it, do you have it's it's attached on the other side too, right? So you yes, simply it, have those like, two pieces are being screwed together. There correct. All right, right on. And these fixtures are they're machined to put the parts exactly back in their exact location when you reassemble. Okay. <laughs> do they simply do they uh, essentially these? Top side and bottom side go and push it together. And put yes, it in basically it's pulling it together, and okay. it's, that fixture will stop it right in its exact spot. Okay. Now, yeah. obviously, if you don't have the tools that we're using, right? You're just trying to use your own homemade tools or whatever, then that's uh, it's gonna make it very difficult. Yeah, right. you can risk putting things back in the wrong place pretty easily. Force it, just you'll feel it stop. And once it stops, it's, it's, it's home. Okay. 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 Just unscrewing everything, pull it right back out. Yeah, let's get a picture of that too. Oh, that's great. So that's that's in there now. Okay. So again, the, the two pieces, this. It's on one side. Yep, and that's where looking at our maintenance manual, it just show you the exact orientation of the fixtures. Okay. Because as you see, you have two right. different sides. How much time have you ever done it without the tool set? Uh, we've never attempted to do it repair without our tool set. Maybe why some guys are taking hours to do this? Mm -hmm. Because, because I and mean, if we can cut that much, you know, cut it, 
it's worth it. If you're paying a guy a hundred dollars an hour, mm -hmm. he's going to do five a year, and mm -hmm. you're paying him, you know, all right. And, and sincerely, some some repair facilities are paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars an hour. If you have a guy who's off, doing his repair, you got shop time, all this good stuff. You got mistakes that they're making. Yep. Next is the G seal. Requires one. Fixture two. Fixture five. Fixture one. Now this is essentially like the same idea, but same idea except we just took one fixture out and it's side. going to stop it right in front of that right that chassis. So Loctite again. Loctite again. Okay. Now the first one was a shaft seal, right? Yep. Shaft seal one. And just to clarify, Tim is putting the same seals back in. This is not something you would normally do. You'd be using new ones. Right. No, right on. Just to clarify, if anybody's you know, seeing the full and cut version, everything can be found in the major kit that Tim is putting back into it. I'm going to picture the major kit right here on. This is just a demo pump that we had, so uh, sure. that's why we're just putting it back as we found it. Now, Tim, did your wife just have a baby? She's getting ready to. Right on, man. Congratulations. Okay. Baby boy, baby girl, do you know? It's a boy. It's a boy? Yeah. Tim Jr.? No, no Tim Jr. <laughs> Mitch? No, Mitch. Larry? No. <laughs> uh, nah, Brody. Bro what is it? Brody. Brody? Nice. I like that name. There you have it. Yeah. Uh, G-Seal is back in its home. Okay. Right. Nice. So, would you mind doing me a favor? Sure. Just a second. So, you had this. Okay, so there was this. Was this used twice? Yes, this was used. These two you, fixtures are used twice. Okay. That's used twice. This is used twice. The only difference is on the shaft seal, you use this. Oh, okay. Oh, because that's the space between them. Mm -hmm. That's the, uh, the space of the other shaft seal. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get you. So. Okay. Yep. Next uh, step is to re grease your seals. Okay. Which comes in this kit here. This is also part of the major kit. The major kit will give you everything you need. Oh, wait. Parts. Let's try that again. Sorry. So that is the grease. That's the grease. Okay. Kit. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tim. And this is specialized grease. This is not just any vacuum pump grease. Right. There's a ton of different kinds. We had, you know, we hit, we had them tested over three or four years. This was determined to be the best. So this okay. is uh, this is not just generic grease. Before I lose Absolutely. Okay. Basically, you just goes between the two of them. Goes in between the lip on both seals. There's like a little groove you see. I'm not sure to get a picture of that. It's two. Yeah, right on. One's a little closer. Right on. Do you like doing repairs, Tim? I do. Gets me away from all the regular everyday right. duties. Peaceful. Right? Did you ever come back here and just put on your headphones and do repairs? Pretty much. Right on. Well, no headphones, but no. It's a radio behind you. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> and on the shaft seal it's a little bit harder to see the groove. But it's right here. You're gonna fill that in with the same grease. 
Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, so there's there's two sides to that. Okay. It's all classical music in here when it's in door repairs. I, I expected this much. Like something right out of a movie. Now, and of course, you guys are open to um, customers coming up here and visiting guys. And sure. Yeah. If somebody wants to get taught maintenance, we're always willing to uh, welcome them in. Obviously, they got to. Or even to see your facility. I mean, sometimes people yeah. want to yeah. see a facility and know that it's. Anybody's welcome to come through, check us out, see what we're about. Yeah. We just call ahead, so we got a heads up. <laughs> can't, we can't do maintenance any given day you walk in the door. Sure. But, uh, as long as you give us a little heads up, we're accommodating. This is found in the O-ring kit, in the major kit. Yeah. Replace that. Oh, those are riveting stuff? Mm-hmm. Want die coke? And Now, no vacuum grease on the seal? No, you don't have to put vacuum grease on it. Okay, is that a KF-40, do you know? It is. Uh, no, no, that's a 25. Well, 25 on this side, but is that sealed right there? Oh. Uh, you know that gasket is? It doesn't matter. Probably. 50? Uh, 5,000? 72? 5,000 seems a bit large. No? Okay. Okay. Oh, I forgot to mention Loctite on. Okay. Four screws. Okay. Now, you know, <clears throat> generally speaking, these screws are, uh, these are different sizes, so you know which one's which. Yes, yeah. Okay. It, it, it'll be pretty obvious if you're going to do this. Good thing about our pumps is all the screws are pretty much the same. Right. And, and you can tell what's going to go where. What is that piece called there? This is your inlet flange. Right. It's T-I-T-E, isn't it? Yes. Loctite? Yeah. You can find that in any Home Depot. Yeah. Long as it's well, anybody's doing maintenance should have some of that ground. As long as it's 242. Two. Yeah, you do want to use that. Though. That is actually kind of called out. Part's finished. Next, we're going to remove our ball bearing. And the wires fixture 17. Fixture 12. So once again, we're going back to the special tool set, yep. and without it, it would be probably more difficult. Significant. Right. Right. And now, you have the instructions to say which of these special parts to use, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's all in the... Manual weighs everything manual. out every single time. Okay.
Now, Tim, have you worked on Varian scrolls ever? Nope. Just a nice style of water. Well, we've done some Varian's, actually. Well, we've done some, we've done rebranded stuff. Right. But no, we've never done like a tri scroll or anything like sure. that. We've only done a Nesta Water, originally a Nesta Water produced products. Right. So, my question is, is basically. Um, they couldn't use this tool set on theirs then. Not on a trash call, no. How good to see. Got it. So, I should turn the volume back on. I just didn't want the phone okay. volume. I'll turn it back because you can hear it go click, click. Here's your ball bearing. Now, which is the tool set? Which is the uh, the pump right now? We've got. This is the tool set. Right. There's your pump parts. There's my pump parts. These are the tool set. Yep. This is a, a wing uh, 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 from earlier. Part. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm doing my fingerprints and all your stuff. That's amazingly fast. Okay. Now we're going to put it back together. Okay. Obviously, this would be a new bearing. Right. It's like that. You're going to eliminate this fixture. Well, actually, let's do this again. Sorry. Pull it back. Let's do it one piece at a time. Sorry. All right. All right. So I got this right here, right? Yep. Okay. Next piece. It's got to focus too. So that's why it takes a second. All right. Yeah. Okay. It's going to drop down in, so once I do that. Right. So, All right. Orientation on this matters. Okay. That face has to be done. Get this tightened down. Mm -hmm. Remove that fixture. Okay. Or it just gets in the way. Okay. I use the table as your leverage. You can actually s see it pushing the bearing back into the cells. This is a nifty little. Uh, Pumping station you got here. That's not ours. We just start our logo on it. For but who's is it? Uh, Laco Technologies in Utah. Mm -hmm. They make a lot of little gadgets for uh, vacuum. Works well. We know that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Kind of expense. Right. Cheaper than other places. So. Okay. Right. Right on. Bearings back in its hell. Okay. Back in the Right on. So I think I need to get a tool set for uh, Oak Ridge. This, that it's just, it means the world. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to put the bearing housing back in its correct location. We're at a little grease. 32 minutes. <clears throat> okay, so we have grease going on it. Yeah, grease just helps it to go back in it. In its place. Right on. Another critical point. Got to make sure you remember to put the washer. Okay. Now we. <coughs> okay. Washer first.
Now, how did you get it to line up so evenly? You got it lined up right with the screws. Yeah, it lined it up right with the holes. Now, did you do that on purpose or does it have a lining mechanism? It does not. Okay. It's just a. Uh, You're used to doing experience. it. Experience. So. Okay. That'd be a real pain if you, you'd have to pop that back off there again. If Correct. You, uh, you want to make sure it's lined up before you put it all the way down in there because, as you see, yeah, you that's what I, I can see. It was not going to come out easily. Okay. All right, now these are four millimeter again. Four millimeter uh, uh, Allen. Actually, they're yes, four millimeter Allen. Okay. Loctite again. Loctite. Now the Loctite is to help for just the sake of vacuum or help hold just the vibration. Just vibration. Okay. Now a customer doesn't, you know, can also, uh, if, if vibration is critical, they can also put this on a pad. Um, and then there's also pads that people put the actual um, pump on as well. Yeah. I've seen that happen. Vibration um, does tend to be low with these, just straight out of the box. Yeah, it's sure. just a percussion well, thing. It, it's, there are pumps with far greater vibration than this. Um, I think most of your um, old rotary vein pumps one having the office is another uh, critical point. You don't want to tighten down one screw. Right. Just like you're uh, changing your tire, right? I'm gonna keep it even. Oh, it still has some more give. These screws do get torqued, and our instruction manual actually gives the correct torque. Okay. Okay. There you have it. That's the FS1 complete. Alright, so that's in the tip 35 seal. minutes. Well, and of course, you're going to replace the tip seal. It comes in the major kit. What, what, what time was it again? 35. You want to explain the tip seal and everything? Yeah, that's why I want to get a kit and actually show oh, yeah. Um, yeah, after this, what I want to do is I want to pause it and um, we'll look at this. Yeah. I'll smoke a cigarette too. I figured. 35 minutes. FS1. What does FS stand for, man? Fix, fix trouble. Okay. Now, my customers say that uh, tip seal um, replacement, and this means probably, you know, well, when you get the kit, all it's of them. Look like that. Right. Okay. okay. Well, let's bring it down to the shop just a little bit more. All right, that's what it looks like. And um, which is the outside, which is the inside, or is it just like it's oriented? Wait, on on a fixed scroll one and two, it don't matter which one of these you use. Okay. But obviously on the ordering scroll, orientation matters. Right. Okay. So obviously this would be longer. Right. You will have to cut those wow. tip seals. Right. If you saw in the box. I'm now do you leave a little bit of space, right? It's because uh, it'll expand a little bit as it gets worked in. No. As it does this, no. I just go. You right, right to the edge. edge. Now, if you notice, there's teeth right yeah. here that oh, okay. lock tip seal in place in the high pressure chamber. Okay. Okay. On a new tip. No photographs going to show that, so I'm not taking a picture no. of that, guys. On that part. Yeah. On a new tip seal, that's going to be raised. You're going to have to press that in. Okay. Okay. Sir, are an artist. Look at you. This would take me eight hours long. Okay. It's okay now, to leave a little bit of gap right there. Or that's what I was asking about. Uh, my understanding is actually you should leave a little gap. Yeah, because it's easier to get it in and out. Yeah. Okay. That. And it's it's still low enough pressure right there. It's not really going to do much. Okay. It's not going to affect your vacuum. And just take a little plastic pull like this, and you're going to press that tip seal down into its into the teeth. Into the teeth. Okay. Are, there, are there other teeth all throughout it? Yeah. Okay, just right there. Just one right there. Okay. Now, that's where one. the vacuum really happens, anyways, right? As you get closer to the center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where it's the hard part. Yeah. Is. You got to re grease the pin cranks at all? Yes. Now, could you do the pin cranks? Sure is there any reason to do the pin cranks now? I mean, if you wanted to pull them out? Uh, 
obviously, yes, I would do the pink rings as I'm disassembling the. Okay. All right, so that's where it goes, right on the, uh, the circular tip. I see it's like it's it's a little bit beveled there, so it's got a um, right. Yep. So it just holds just enough. Recess is it maybe the right word? That's a uh, complete. Okay. FS1. Fully complete FS1.